Hello, my name is Andrew Morgan Smith, and I'm here today on the Radium Records channel to talk to you about CC1 and CC11 and how we use them to create really realistic string sounds. So I'm in Logic today, and we're looking at um, a library. This is an Aflatus Strings. Um, this is just a library I happen to use quite a bit. So I've just loaded up their Lush Cellos Legato, which is an eight cello patch. So CC1 is your mod wheel. So if you have, well, um, most keyboards have some kind of mod wheel. <laughs> this is pitch bend. It's just the one that usually goes back to center. And then here's your mod wheel. On this keyboard, I don't have it mapped out like that because I prefer to have um, an outside MIDI controller. You can get all kinds of this. This is from Choi Designs. I really like this one. Um, my previous MIDI keyboard had them just built into the keyboard. Um, you can get pretty cheap ones. You can get small ones. I have like a little four channel one for whenever I travel. There's just all kinds of MIDI controllers out there that deserve their entire own video. But I've mapped this to CC1. So this is now my mod wheel. And then this is CC11. And this is what's called expression. Um, and so the convention in most sample libraries is that CC1 is your dynamics. So you'd go through your dynamic layers of your sample. So it, as an instrument plays, the timbre changes. So here, the string players are playing harder into the string. They're actually digging deeper into the string. Whereas down here, they're playing softer with like a softer touch. All right, so that is a very important thing, especially with samples, like live players are never static. They're always constantly changing pressure on their bows. They're constantly moving their bows. They're changing their 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 pressure on their hands. So it's never one specific thing, right? So we have to model that in our samples and we only have so many layers of every sample. So I, I don't actually know off the top of my head how many layers this sample has, but this only gets you so far. And so what we have to do is we have to kind of trick our, our ears into believing it's something else. So now we move to expression. With CC11 in contact and with a lot of other libraries, CC11 is basically your volume. I look at it as like a, a volume, right? So it's like a little, I like to think of it as a mic volume. Uh, I, I usually do kind of move them up in tandem. I kind of move them around in tandem. Some samples will let you lock them together. But for me, I like to think of like my mic volume is my expression. And then the dynamic is the actual playing, like what the player is playing. Let's just do adjust the, the dynamics here. That sounds pretty decent, especially since usually I'd be playing, usually I'd be running more, right? So with my CC11, now let's do it with CC11 and not C, not dynamics. You'll notice that especially in this library and most libraries, CC1 never gets you all the way down. There's no like tapered release. It always has kind of on off like a real player does. But in music and especially in film music, we're not used to hearing completely that, right? If we hear a fade down. We can get to actual zero with the mic volume. So let me play for you like how I like to workflow something like this. So we're gonna just, we're gonna play something in and uh, I'm just gonna play in an idea. So that's cool. That, sure, it's a little interesting progression, not anything crazy. Let's get the emotion into it. So now, what I'll do is I'll grab my CC1 and CC11. And if you're a good enough piano player, I'm sure you could do them at the same time, but I am not. So here we go. So 
So now I have captured this recording. I captured my, my performance. So here is what I just played in. I did the same capture record. I have like an, I just make sure it doesn't overwrite. So it just adds to whatever I'm playing. This gives us kind of the imperfections that we want. We never want, if you do, or if you're one of those people who wants to draw in your automation, make sure you never draw it in and just have it static. Like we never want it to be um, completely a straight line because this does not sound great. Because once again, people are not machines, right? That's the... That's kind of the problem. So if you're in Logic and a few other compu uh, programs, you can do parabolas. Parabola stuff also works. If, if you have a straight line in your dynamic layer, in either of your dynamics, it just doesn't quite feel right. There's just something about it. So I, I personally like to perform it in because that just has a better feeling, but do what you want. If you can't perform it or if you don't have the interface to do it, um, then just do what you have to do. All right, now we're getting into orchestration, right? So another thing to keep in mind, if you want things to sound real, um, knowing what a real string section sounds like helps. This is kind of a classic voicing of strings is to go root five, three. Um, so like anything below, I like to think of like anything below here, I'm usually doing root or fifth, unless I'm specifically doing some kind of pedal movement where I'm going to a third or something else. But if I'm building string chords, this is a real safe move, right? Something that sounds... See, now I'm on the third, but I'm not I'm not putting any intervals that are closer than a fifth here. So that's important to, to remember is like the the closer together your intervals are down here below below C2 is it's going to get muddier and muddier and muddier. And if that's what you want, great. But like you play this chord versus this chord, it just has more clarity to it. And this may be the sound you want. But if you go... It just has more more clarity to the sound. So let's add some more layers in here. So I'm gonna go grab the lush violas. So here's our viola sound. Or just. Right, and these are just out of the box. I'm not doing any processing on these. Cool, that sounds pretty good. Let's add some basses for that bottom end, right? And I'm gonna mute this on the low end. And now, let's see what we get. And I haven't done any other processing, you know what I mean? Like, I haven't done anything else but do this. Now, what if I wanted to add a nice low bottom on the last note, right? On that last F. Let's hear what that sounds like now. That's all from the same passage, right? And now let's add in a violin line. Now, once we get above here, once we get, you know, like we were talking about, we want some clarity in the string writing. You try not to be too clustery unless that's what you're actually going for. Let's just try and write a line here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write the violin two in a lower octave and then maybe the double violin. Maybe I should do it actually. I'm gonna double violin one. I'm gonna play violin one in the higher octave here. All right, now let's figure out a violin two line. So here's our current chord. So I'm gonna probably start similar to here and then I'm gonna break it up, right? So. So the trick is I've used all the same MIDI automation down here. So, cause they're all gonna have similar dynamics since they're all moving together as a unit. And then I'm going to try and create several different lines on all these things. I think what I wanna do is move that here.
Latvia. Right? And I mean, that sounds pretty good. And all I just did was was just, you watched me build that little passage from scratch. And we can add more reverb to it. So as you can see, that's how we created this little passage by using CC1 and CC11. I think it's a big game changer. I always try to be moving my CC1 and CC11 faders. Um, even if I'm doing something in a quiet dynamic range, I'm still just moving them a little bit. So that way they're, you're really feeling the phrasing that players will be playing with and bringing that to life. So check it out. Share this with anyone who you think might need to learn how to have more realistic string passages. Once again, I'm Andrew Morgan Smith, and this is the Radium Records channel. Check it out. I also have my own channel, Andrew Morgan Smith Music. I'll see y'all next time.